Sometimes watching a movie isn't enough. You also want to eat that movie. That's why there's movie recipes. So Say Hello to My Little Lamb was inspired by Scarface in a number of ways. Uh, I wanted it to be very visually striking, so the, the old supper clubs of Miami, people wearing tuxedos or white open collar shirts and that white and black and a little bit of the red to kind of signify that it's kind of a, a very bloody movie also. Um, but I was also trying to draw inspiration uh, from my recent trip to Cuba where I saw Cuban chefs uh, changing the ingredients on these dishes. This is a traditional, uh, traditionally Ropa Vieja is done with beef, but we did it with lamb, uh, we used squid ink, we're adding kind of a, a surf and turf perspective to it with the, the calamari mojo and the black beans. Uh, so we tried to really kind of push the envelope a little bit. We really wanted the dish to be relative to what's happening in Cuba today, but also kind of uh, be inspired by Miami supper clubs and that kind, of, that, that kind of vibe from back then that you don't really see anymore. Using squid ink um, is, I, I'm using it a lot now because I really enjoy that kind of murky, sea foamy flavor. Um, it's also uh, a cool way to add an interesting color, interesting richness, you know, and kind of layer different flavors. So I'm able to coat the lamb uh, and cook it in the, the squid ink, and at the same time I'm able to take actual squid and incorporate it into the dish. So it really lends itself to opening up the dish and making it something different and cool. Um, and the flavors go really well together, so it, it, it really works nicely. I really think that Samantha would have chosen the exact cake that I made, which was our vanilla cake, vanilla frosting, and then our lemon curd filling, because she really was just a little bit saucy on the inside, a little spunky. So our lemon curd is really bright and really flavorful, but she's still just American girl. She just wanted to keep it nice and calm and sweet and just have a really great Sweet 16 birthday party. And that's where the vanilla comes from. But also in the movie, if you look at the cake, it's a vanilla cake. It's like traditional birthday cake. Though I did read something that it was actually a prop and it was made of cardboard. So that cake wasn't really real. And when I found that out, I got a little upset. So when I decided to open a bakery, I myself was vegan and still am vegan. And I always say that we're not uh, simply replacing ingredients when it comes to vegan baking versus more traditional style baking. But what we're doing is recreating the method so that it doesn't need eggs or dairy. So with the cake that we made today, we did use a product that is a leavening agent and a tapioca starch, and it's called uh, Egg Replacer. And you can use it in some things. It just gives you a little extra boost since you're really relying on the proteins and the starch and the flour to really give you the structure of that cake. So they can be a little bit more delicate, but they're still just as delicious. So we did a 60-day uh, dry-aged uh, prime CAB, what they call a tomahawk ribeye. It's been dry aged for 60 days and aged again another 30 days in Kagoshima Wagyu fat. And uh, roasted in the hearth with confit fingerling potatoes, cipollini onions, broccoli rabe, a red wine uh, marrow butter to finish it. Very cool, kind of rustic dish that actually goes in with the theme of being, you know, from Jurassic days of fire and, and so forth. Temperature control in steaks and meat, my daughters asked me last week, like, how do you know when it's ready? It, it's my feel, it's my touch, it's about experience. You know, I'm not the chef that puts a thermometer in it and, you know, looks at the time, let's temp it. You know, it's all about feeling. I mean, if you start with your finger, with your thumb, that's rare, then you move it up, it's mid-rare, medium, and well done. I mean, it's, it's how they were taught, you know, 100 years ago. And you have to understand what you're cooking too. The biggest issue of cooking meat that big, first of all, you have to have an oven big enough or a grill big enough to do that. But it's also timing and how to baste it. I mean, you have to watch and you have to understand when you have a cut that large as well, what the resting time is. You know, and you've got to let the meat rest for like 15 minutes before you slice it or you just lose it. So there's a lot of different aspects to it. <laughs> 